Nala, what do you think? Do we need to install a ground rod or not? In this video, I'm going to overview a manual transfer switch like this Generac model. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to properly ground your portable generator when using a transfer switch like this one. Before we begin, you need to understand the difference between a bonded and floating neutral generator. Inside the generator, there are four bus bars similar to what you would have at your main electrical panel. I have color coded them. This is a four wire system, line one, line two, neutral and ground. In the United States, we use a split phase power system where the voltage between line one and line two is 240 volts, while the voltage between line one and neutral is 120. Inside a bonded generator, there is a physical bonding jumper that is connecting the neutral and ground bus bars together. A floating neutral generator does not have this bonding jumper. The neutral and ground bus bars are isolated, meaning they are not touching. Modern generators come with a bonded neutral from the factory, as shown by this sticker. Make sure to check your user manual to confirm what configuration you have. A Homelink manual transfer switch looks like this. There are similar products made by other manufacturers, but here's the big picture. Your generator connects to a power inlet box using a heavy duty power cable, either a 30 amp or 50 amp cable. The Homelink unit connects to your main electrical panel via a 50 amp circuit breaker. This Homelink unit acts as an interconnection point between your home electrical panel and the generator. Existing circuits from your main electrical panel need to be rewired to your Homelink. So when you are on generator power, only the critical circuits inside your Homelink will power on. These are the basics of this manual transfer switch, but I want to show you the internal wiring diagram of this setup. I simplified the diagram so it's easier to understand. When it comes to grounding, what's important to understand is the behavior of the neutral wire. For this particular Generac model, the neutral from the generator lands here at the switch. Then, the neutral from the main electrical panel lands at the same spot. When you switch between utility power and generator power, this switch will open line 1, line 2, and the neutral simultaneously. Here is a shop drawing in the instruction manual showing you what I just mentioned. Since the neutral wire gets disconnected, this generator setup is considered as a separately derived system. This means this configuration is treated as two independent electrical systems. Each electrical system will need its own separate bonding jumper here, and each system will need its own grounding electrode here. Even the installation manual states right here, you need to install a ground rod. It is absolutely required. If you have a different transfer switch that does not switch the neutral, then check out my grounding video linked in the description. I have two more tips for you before you leave. First, make sure you use number six copper wire for your ground rod. The code states this ground wire does not need to be any bigger than number six. And second, when you buy the ground rod attachments, confirm you are buying UL listed parts. This means the attachments are certified to be used as grounding equipment. These are very important grounding details no other channels are talking about. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing for more electrical videos.